First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, 2nd United States Sharpshooters. And on this episode of Sharpshooter Minutes, we're going to show you how to hobnail brogans. I'm with uh, Captain Ethan Whitehall, and we are set up to show you uh, how to be set up with all the tools and essentials to hobnail your brogans. Anyone who reenacts knows how slippery but the bare leather soles can be. By adding these really inexpensive uh, hobnails, you can get a lot of traction and be more confident in your footing on the battlefield. So Captain Whitehall, what sort of stuff do you need to get started? Uh, ideally you need a shoe last, so uh, preferably a metal stand with a detachable uh, sole. It goes on, slide the shoe on so it forms to the foot. Because the idea with the hobnail is these little nails go into the shoe and as they hit the last, the thin metal tends to curl and lock into the shoe or uh, into the sole of the leather so they don't pull out easily. Uh, another thing you, it's not required but it helps, is a leather or metal punch that you can get at a just local hardware store. It just helps set the hole for the leather. Once it's in there, you just pull it out and it makes a nice little uh, pilot hole for the hobnail to go into. And they're not required but they definitely do help. It is a good cobbler's hammer, which the lasts and cobbler's hammers can be found at uh, just local antique stores. A lot of people tend to get rid of them. Yeah, and where, where's a good place to find your, your hobnails? It's not something you're going to find at most stores, right? It's a company <laughs> called uh, Grunny, and uh, they can be found on uh, the internet. Just type in Grunny Hobnails. They have a lot of upholstery tacks, uh, Hungarian hobnails. The preferred kind is the uh, 3 uh grooved head uh, hobnails, and you can usually get about half a pound for 30 bucks, and a half pound goes a long way. I splurged and bought a pound. And, and we'll be sure to put a link in the description. Yeah. So how do you how do you get laid out? How do you know uh, what they're going to look like and how many to put in? Usually, uh, I follow kind of where the main part. So I got about two and a half to three inches worth of space between the heel and the first row of bob nails, and I usually go about five across and five deep with some on the toes. Well, the majority though being where the pad of the foot, where most of the bending is going to be, and the uh, after I get all the holes pre-punched, it's pretty simple. You just set the set the nail. Uh, this is where the term cobbler's thigh comes in handy, or has come from, because you set the toe of the foot and uh, about the main portion on your thigh. You set it in, and of course you're going to get a lot of uh, vibrations and a lot of old cobblers and uh, from Williamsburg and everything from the 1600s. They've actually dug up the bodies and the thigh bone is actually bowed like that just from repeated hits uh, of making shoes. So once you get the first one in, <clears throat> pretty simple. <clears throat> a couple taps. Yeah, most of these tools you can get at most antique stores with a little bit of time and effort. You can clean them up and put them back into service. And uh, heel plates also make a nice addition to make sure that your leather heels last longer. We'll have, uh, like I said, we'll have a link in the uh, in the description to where you can get your hobnails. And uh, <clears throat> if you like this, we uh, like this video, we'd appreciate a like. And be sure to uh, click to to subscribe to this video and stay in touch. And we'll see you on the battlefield.